Recently, one of our members shared a post about a man she's been in relationship for about seven months. She found out that he's been regularly visiting an ex, and I don't mean an ex-spouse, an ex-girlfriend, helping out with things around the house. And he hid this from her, meaning he did not tell her he was doing these things. And they had a confrontation, if you will. And I use the term confrontation, but something occurred. Okay. And his uh, claim was he didn't want to tell you, he didn't want to tell her because he didn't want to hurt her. Okay. And she feels very betrayed and she has difficulty now trusting this person. So I want to address a few things here with respects to can a man or woman be a friend with an ex, um, number one. With, and, and, and really diving into this for a second, because I think it depends, okay? And the second thing is, how should she react to this? Or in other words, how should she address this? And these are just merely my opinions with respects to this. So number one, can a man or woman be friends with an ex? Um, let's first define ex. Is it an ex-spouse? Is it an ex-spouse you have children with? Or is it an ex-boyfriend or girlfriend? Or we could call them an ex-lover. So I just want to differentiate between an ex spouse and an ex-lover. Okay. Now, certainly when we share children with a person, in other words, or we have been married to someone, the spouse, and share children, it's natural that you're going to be a part of this person's life for, quite frankly, the life of your children. And if they are young children and you're in this particular case, let's just say he was visiting to help the collective group, I, I don't see any problem with that. Okay. Now, with that said, you know, certainly being upfront with your partner about that is critically important. Okay, so I just wanted to find that. Now, if it's an ex-lover and you're helping around the house, well, the, you know, I don't see anything wrong with that per se. Um, certainly not telling your partner, which I'm going to get back, get into in a little bit more detail, is certainly, I believe, unacceptable. Now, here's where it gets tricky being friends with an ex-spouse or an ex-lover. Where it gets tricky is that if your friendship has an emotional connection to it, where you're very vulnerable, authentic, transparent with this ex in your life. In other words, you're sharing intimate things about your life and more importantly, intimate things about your relationship with your new partner. I don't believe that's healthy to do that if it's based on an emotional connection. Now, Listen, social activities, you know, uh, social conversations about people, I don't see a real problem with that. And yet intimate conversations, I believe, can lead to what's known as emotional sex. And what that means is that can literally continue an emotional relationship with this ex person, even though you're in a new relationship. And I don't believe that is healthy. Um, and quite frankly, if it were in my relationship, it wouldn't be acceptable. Now, let me be candid with you in, with respects to my relationship with my girlfriend and I. We are both um, very friendly with our ex-spouses, and I'm actually very friendly with an ex-girlfriend uh, of mine. And because we treat each other like family, and in the case of my, my partner, she is very friendly with her ex-spouse. And she's still somewhat friendly with uh, men that she had seen in the past. Now, when I say friendly, again, friendly and, you know, wishing them a happy birthday, kind of benign. You know, if there was habitual conversation and it was of an intimate nature about the existing relationship, I don't believe that's healthy. Now, he did not want to tell her because he was afraid it hurt her. Well, then on some level, he knew this truth would hurt her. He, that, then the real question is, why did you think it would hurt me? It would be the kind of the question I ask if you thought it was okay. Is it okay to do something, to hide something from me that would hurt me? I think it's important to have a very serious conversation about this with respects to the viability of this relationship. Because if there's our, if it's seven months in and there's deception going on, what more deception could happen in the future? That's certainly a question to ask. Now, he might think it was benign that he was doing these things for her, but at the same time, he knew by her finding out it would hurt her, then it really begs him to say, why do you think you'd do something that would want to hurt her? Because you're saying, well, it's okay that I do these things for this ex-lover, ex-relationship. Ex it's okay that I do it, but it's not okay that you know about it. That's not 
a way to build a healthy, uh, happy relationship with a person. Now, here's the struggle that she has. She's bonded with this man. She's very attached to this man. Okay, that makes it difficult. The minute you become bonded and attached with someone, look at, it's natural to attach and bond with people. Okay, we do it with our children. We do it with our family member. That's a natural thing. If this person is no longer in our life, that feels like a devastation. At the same time, when you bond with someone, it's important to bond with someone that you've built a solid foundation with each other from a healthy perspective, if you want viability in the relationship. In this particular case, this relationship is built on mistrust. And I don't believe that, I, I mean, unless there's some radical therapy that happens in this relationship, unless there's radical conversations, it doesn't make sense in my mind to continue with a, in a relationship with someone who is not going to be forthcoming with you or at least has not been forthcoming. And then the real question is, what is he willing to do to change this dynamic? Is he willing to end this uh, relationship with this ex-person doing chores around the house? Which most likely he's not going to want to give up on that because he doesn't value the new relationship because the fact that he didn't say something and knew it would hurt her means he doesn't value this relationship enough to think of it as serious. And folks... Here's the bottom line. If two people make or, or, or if two people begin exploring a relationship and they're having regular sex together, the real challenge today is pinning down a solid commitment outside of monogamy and exclusivity. I'm gonna repeat that. Really nailing down commitment beyond monogamy and exclusivity, because you can be monogamous with someone. You could, or claim to be monogamous. You can claim that you won't actively be dating in the, in the dating marketplace, like being on the apps and such. That's certainly a form of commitment. At the same time, what's lacking today, or at least what I witness, is so most relationships are, are a casual relationship. A casual relationship, meaning you can get out of it whenever you want. There's no real commitment to it other than Again, maybe companionship, connection, and maybe sex. That's the commitment to it. I think we need something stronger than that. You know, it used to be marriage was a, a definition of commitment. That kind of forced you to, on some level, be committed to it because there was a there was a there was a consequence if it broke up. Yeah, you know what? Splitting assets really sucks. You know, um, having to pay alimony and child support really sucks. So maybe. The, the value is that it may make some people work harder to sustain the relationship when you've got something to lose. But today, casual relationships, you have nothing to lose to enter in that except your emotional well-being. Do you know dating triggers the number one emotional health issue most people are faced with? I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, and I'm not likable. And quite frankly, dating today, in my opinion, is just a very long, strung out Friends with benefits. That's right. It's a friend. You get the benefit of sex without any real commitment built in. So how do we build in deeper commitment with someone? Well, one thing like what I've done is I'm, we live together. We made a financial commitment to one another. We signed the lease together. And there's a sacrifice if something doesn't happen. There's a consequence if that gets broken. Then maybe that helps us work harder in the relationship. I say this as a question, not as a statement of fact. But what is real partnership for you? I invite you to ask that. This is why in my private coaching, I teach how to have radically honest conversations with people sooner rather than later so you don't find yourself in a casual relationship. Or, or as I said before, dating is just a real series of strung out. It's, a, it's a really a long version of friends with benefits. You might be monogamous, you might be exclusive, but are you really building a deep foundation that's going to go the distance with a person? That's my invitation to invite. Okay, so I went off tangent. Let me come back to, can you be friends with an ex? Yes, you can be friendly with an ex. I fully believe that. And you can even have some social interaction with an ex. I don't believe there's anything wrong with it if it's done in a healthy way without emotional um, communication with one another. Number two, by willfully knowing this would hurt someone, that's being deceptive. 
and I would call this person out. And if they're unwilling to make some compromise in the relationship by maybe ending this dynamic, which he may say he'll do, but he'll still do it most likely, I think it's time to look for a partner that actually has an honest bone in their body. That's my two cents anyway. All right, folks, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Please post a comment below if this resonated with you or if not. Uh, as always, if you find value in the group, please tell your friends about Midlife Love Mastery. Send them to my website, jonathanasley.com. Have them click the group coaching button so they can join our fantastic group. And I'm going to sign off this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrog of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow. There's a teddy bear. Give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.